Our scripture reading this morning comes from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. All right. Give me just a second here. Everybody ready? Here we go. All right. A minute of your life has just passed. <laughs> Did you feel it? How many of you felt that that 60 seconds of your life sped by? That's the fastest time in the world. It just go pew. No? Took for, it was slow. David says it was slow. All right. How many of y'all felt it was slow? Did anybody say that, that kind of, what in the world is that preacher doing? That kind of a slow right there? Okay, some slowness going on. All right. You know, time is an interesting thing. When, when we're in a hurry, when, uh, when we're having something that we want to get done or we want to get somewhere, time can seem to go as slow as molasses in the middle of winter. But if we're anxious about something, you know, we want, we want, to, we want to get there, boy. Uh, uh, some, or, 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 yeah, am I saying that right? I think I may have said that wrong. Time takes forever when we're in a hurry, but time speeds by when we're doing something enjoyable. You know the old phrase, time flies when you're having fun, that's right. So it's either time, the same 60 seconds, the same hour out of your week, the same week can seem to fly by one time and slow by another time. Now if you're a little kid and you're thinking about what happens on December 25th, right now, during this season, the time is going so slow, it's about to kill you, you know? You're ready to see what's, what's going to be under the tree when you open the packages, you want to see what Santa brings you, and you're like, come on, just make it go faster, I'm ready for December 25th to be here now. But if you're a parent, and you're trying to get your gifts together for everybody and you're trying to get the house decorated and maybe you've got a party you're hosting or or maybe you've got family coming and everything has to be cleaned up and and uh you know it doesn't it seems like time's going so fast doesn't it you don't feel like you have enough of it you know we talk about time in in different ways uh, uh we talk about it like like I just mentioned, which is more chronologically, talking about the hours and the minutes and the days uh, that ahead of us and that sort of thing. But we also talk about time in terms of what we say as timing or right timing. I mean, think about it. There's, there's a right time to do things and there's a wrong time to do things. The, the right time to go swimming in the lake is in the summer, right? It is not the right time to go swimming in the lake right now, isn't it? It, that, no, you don't want to go jump in the lake right now, especially if you lived up north. Woo, that would be cold right now, you know? Uh, some of y'all are gardeners. How many of y'all are gardeners? Raise your hand, okay? 
there's a right time to plant tomatoes and there's a wrong time to plant tomatoes, correct? Right, okay. There's certain times of the year that you, you plant certain vegetables and, and certain flowers and certain things like that. There's a right time and, and there's a wrong time. It's all about timing. We talk about timing in sports, don't we? If the quarterback is not connecting with his receivers, we say, you know what? That quarterback's timing's off tonight or today or whenever the game is. Uh, in basketball, if, uh, if the basketball team has been practicing these particular plays that they're running and, and uh, the fellow with the ball, if he throws it a little too fast or a little too slow and that other player is not in the right position, they say the timing is off. Think about football again. What about linemen, you know? They're down, they're ready to go, they're waiting for the, for the ball to be uh, uh, hiked and all that kind of good stuff. If they jump ahead, it's offsides. Why? Because their timing is off. This year, uh, or this season, is the season of Advent for us. It's the, the season of preparing our hearts to celebrate afresh and anew the birth of of the Christ child. And it's particularly, uh, I think, special uh, in that we are in a church tradition that does that. Not all churches celebrate Advent. And, and I think churches that don't miss something because we don't take for granted. It's not that, that Christmas just suddenly pops up on us and like, oh gosh, oh, it's Christmas morning or, you know, it's Christmas Eve service, you know. No, we take time to get ready to prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, prepare ourselves spiritually to celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. During this season, we're going to be focusing on the miracle of Christmas. That's our theme for this year's Advent. And we're going to look at what that means in some different sorts of ways. The miracle of the birth is just amazing, isn't it? The fact that, that God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ who was equal with God the Father and God the Spirit, Uh, one substance, different persons, that's that whole Trinity thing, kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. But God himself sent his own Son to be for us. This tiny, helpless baby born in a manger. He who was not bound by time entered into time and space, born of the Virgin Mary, to be, to, be, the, the, to be laid in this humble manger. The one who was present at the beginning of creation. The one who, whose voice was, was, was co-equal with, with God the Father. When they spoke the world into existence. Suddenly can't say anything but baby gibberish. That's amazing. That's a miracle. That's what we're going to look at during this season is the miracle that is the first Christmas. Now this morning, what we're going to do is, uh, is we're going to talk about how miraculous this is. We're going to talk about how uh, he loved us and, and, and what this, this whole thing means for us. And we're going to talk about this, this whole miracle of the moment. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says this, But when the set time had come, God sent his son. When the set time had come, God sent his son. Now that whole phrase right there, the set time had come, it's a particular phrase that, that the author is using here in Galatians, that Paul is using. It's translated in different ways and each of the translations is trying to capture the meaning of it and sometimes if you read multiple translations of a particular verse you capture more of the nuance of what the what the author is trying to say so let me look at it from a a couple of other different places one the Holman Bible says when the time had come to completion in the King James Version it says when the fullness of time had come and then in the New Living Translation, it says, when the right time came. What we're talking about in the miracle of the moment this morning is not necessarily about the chronological time of this whole thing, okay? 
although that's important. It's good to know when Christ was born and how he lived and, and all that kind of good stuff. And, and when, you know, when did Mary find out? When did Joseph find out? Those are all chronological things. What we want to talk about this morning is this whole idea of God's timing in the miracle of the moment. God's timing in the miracle of the moment. I want to talk about it in a couple different ways. The first is this. God came at the right moment. The Bible says that God came at a set time, that, that God came at the fullness of time when this whole thing was complete, when everything was right. As the New Living Translation says, He came not at just any time, not at some time, not maybe tomorrow or next day. He came at the right time. Have you ever thought about that? What made that time the right time for Jesus to be born? Now, biblical experts who look at Christ's birth through the lens of history tell us that, uh, that this timing was, was historically uh, a very precise and, and, and a very important time, a very opportune time, if you will, for Jesus to come. Listen to what uh, Warren Worsby says in his book, Be Free. He says, historians tell us that the Roman world was in great expectation, waiting for a deliverer at the time Jesus was born. The old religions were dying. The old philosophies had been found empty and powerless to change persons' lives. Strange new mystery religions were being invaded or were invading the empire. Religious bankruptcy and spiritual hunger was everywhere. God was preparing the world for his son. The timing was right. The world at that time was right longing, wanting, desiring someone to step in and to change their lives. Historians also note that through Roman ingenuity, this was a time in which the world was, was very, very connected. Now, I know we use that term today to talk about social media and internet and phones and all that kind of stuff, but in that time when they talked about being connected, it wasn't about internet and all that. It was about roads. For, for, before this time, people had pathways or, 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 or they, had, uh, they had roads, but they were more uh, ruts for wagon wheels or, or pathways that had been padded down by a horse foot. And, and it wasn't the best and, and it wasn't necessarily the safest kind of a world to live in and to travel between the cities. And so the cities were very cut off before this time. But in, Roman, in the Roman world, when Rome took over, uh, there was this ingenuity uh, on their part in which they saw the need to make roads that were, that were, that were stone and, and laid out with rock, that people could travel more freely. It was also a time when they had Roman garrisons all around and they had Roman soldiers that would patrol these roads. And so suddenly, these cities that were so distant from one another were suddenly connected to one another in ways they had never been before. And so that provided a way where the message of Christ could be transported, delivered, shared from city to city, from person to person because of this newfound connectivity in the world through the Roman roads. God knew his timing. He knew that that was the right time, the right moment for Christ to be born. The world was ready because it was more than just Christ being born. It was his message being proclaimed. It was the church being founded. It was the apostles going forth. It was Paul's missionary journeys. All of these things were in place and provided for because the timing the timing was right. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about this morning, about this uh, miracle of the moment, is about the moment of our lives, our moments, if you will, that God speaks to us. These moments that God has for us in our lives, where God looks for us to respond, where God meets us in moments like these. It seems we're always waiting for just the right time to do something, doesn't it? Uh, we, we put things off. We, we, uh, we, 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 oh, maybe I'll get to that later. We're waiting for that right time in our lives. Maybe, maybe you're waiting for the right time to make that commitment to God. 
Maybe you're here today. I mean, just, listen to this. Just because uh, we're here today doesn't mean you're a Christian. It's the same thing, you know, just because you're in the garage doesn't make you a car. Just because you're in McDonald's, it doesn't make you a Happy Meal. Just because you're in church doesn't necessarily make you a Christian. Maybe you're here today and you've never made that faith choice for yourself. Maybe mama and dad have, but you haven't. Maybe today is the right moment for you to make that commitment. Maybe you're waiting for that time to step up and to serve in ministry in the church. You are a Christian. You are a part of this church. You've been faithful. You come to worship on a semi-regular basis or regular basis, but you really haven't done much beyond that. Maybe that right moment for you today is that decision to say, you know what, I need to get involved in Sunday school, or I need to get involved in serving, or I need to get involved in leadership. I need to do something for the kingdom of God beyond just showing up. Maybe that's your right time moment this morning. Maybe for you, your right time moment or your right miracle moment is joining this church. You know, you've been coming to the church for a while. This, you, feel, you feel like family. Maybe you're already involved in a bunch of stuff, but you've never, you've never made that commitment to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor God and, and I'm going to be faithful to this church with my prayers, my presence, my gifts, my service, and my witness. Maybe, maybe the miracle of the moment today for you is to respond to God's call on your life through membership. We're seemingly always waiting for that right time, aren't we? In, Ro in Mark chapter, five, verse, or, or chapter 1, verse 5, it says this, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The time is ripe. The time is ripe. Is this your right moment? There's no better time than the present to make, to make a decision uh, such as these. It's no better time to, to step forward and say, you know, it's time to become a member. It's time to step up and serve. It's time to, to make that commitment to Christ. What is it? What is your right moment? What is God calling you to? Maybe it's not anything that I've listed here, but there's something you know God is calling you to do or to be or to say, but you've been making excuses. You've been holding back. You know, people say excuses are like belly buttons. Everybody's got one. I think excuses are like toes and fingers. Everybody's got multiples. Are you making excuses? Don't miss the moment. You know, back then when Jesus was born, it, it wasn't in the finest of places, right? It, it basically was on the backside of Bethlehem in a dirty old stable with cows around and hay that was probably not the freshest of hay. The place smelled, folks. Jesus was born to a couple of peasant kids. He was born on the backside of Bethlehem. Many, many people missed it there was no fanfare there was no fireworks there was no neon signs there was there was no television campaign there was never you know none of that went on because people were so busy or, or, or people were, were running here and there that that they missed so many of them missed that moment until god stepped in and said well it's time to start proclaiming this moment and he visited some shepherds with the angels. Max Lucado, in his book, God Came Near, describes what people were doing while this dramatic event occurred on the backside of Bethlehem. He writes, Meanwhile, the city hums. The merchants are unaware that God has visited their planet. The innkeeper would never believe that he had just sent God out into the cold. And the people would scoff at anyone who told them the Messiah lay in the arms of a teenager on the outskirts of their village. Those who missed his majesty's arrival, missed it not because of evil acts or malice. No, they missed it because they simply weren't looking. They weren't attentive. They weren't responsive. Little has changed in the last 2,000 years, has it? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to respond to God today? What is it God is calling you to? What commitment is God calling you to make? And what reason do you have 
to wait. God came at the right time in the form of a tiny baby. He came, he was born, he grew up, he lived, he shared his life in teaching, he healed, he made a massive difference in the world, not only through his earthly ministry, but even more so through his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, so that he might usher in a way so that you and I, through his suffering and death and resurrection, might be able by faith to enter into a saving relationship with God. That alone calls for us to respond. And the good news is, most every single one of you have already responded to that, and I'm grateful for that. But what else is God calling you to? And how will you respond? You can let chronological time pass all you want, another 60 seconds. I'll put it on the clock if you'd like. But I'm not talking about chronological time this morning talking about right time and there's no better time for the right time than now how will you respond in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen